And it is summer hiking season, walking on unfamiliar, uneven terrain that can put an unexpected strain on a lot of our muscles and joints. But do not fear hikers. Physio Mike is here to help us out with this. Mike Salemi with Movenetics of Physiotherapy joins us now to uh, help us find our footing. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Well, I'm good now because I suffered from some very tight IT bands after a hike recently. We'll get to that in a moment. But how often do you hear about people maybe underestimating the challenge of a hike? I hear about it a lot, actually. And it can range from any type of person. I've had high-level athletes finish a season of hockey go backpack and go traveling and then come into physio with overuse injuries, aches and pains that they weren't anticipating. So I do see a lot. And why is that? Is it just because we're using our muscles in different ways? You know, I think that the most significant thing that's changing with hiking is that terrain like you'd mentioned. A lot of the time when we're walking, it's either pavement or sidewalk or just a flat floor. So you hit pavement and you have pebbles and rocks and different uh, types of terrain. It's a lot of different forces through your feet and through your body. And if you haven't done that in a while that's when the aches and pains can sometimes show up. Yeah, because I even find if I'm not wearing my good hiking boots, when you hit some of those roots and things like that, eef. Absolutely. Yeah. So then what are some of the basic things that we should think about before we head out on a hike? I'd say before heading out on a hike, you got to ask yourself, when's the last time I did anything like this? Right. Right? So <laughs> a lot of the time, you know, we're, we're working and, and some people have more of a sedentary lifestyle, but... You know, we're doing our same things nine to five every day for months and months and months. And then we have this big hike planned and the body hasn't had anything close to that kind of physical output in months. So one of the things you want to consider is leading up to that hike. What have you done physically that's going to make sure that you're ready for that hike? Um, Dehydration sometimes sets in really quickly when you set out on a hike. Fatigue also. Not only is it distance that we're accounting for, but like I said, the terrain, the altitude. So... Make sure it's it's a little bit more planned out than just circling the dates in a calendar and saying, this is when I'm going for my hike. Yeah. Well, and I only imagine that my IT bands I suffered from was because I'm not doing a lot of steep inclines, right? Isn't that the truth? Yes. Yeah. So again, I mean, who's walking up a, a path for hours on end? Not me. Weekly. <laughs> I know I'm not. <laughs> and, you know, it's, speaking about the, picking the right footwear, the first time I ever went hiking, my friends, because I, I I'm not much of a hiker, but I see it a lot in practice. My friends kept on saying, "Mike, you got to come out. You got to come out." So I said, "Listen, I don't have shoes. All I have is Nike free runs." Mm-hmm. And they said, "Don't worry about it. That's perfect. Those will work." <laughs> Did right. I ever pay the price? <laughs> every single foot. I mean, every single step. I could feel the pain after a little while. So there are a lot of factors that go into you know making sure that your hike goes as smoothly as possible. Yeah, and probably don't be shy if you want to use a hiking pole, too, to help oh you assist goodness. with Absolutely. some of those. Yeah. And no, nothing wrong with that. It also helps the upper extremities, too. It's, it's good for uh, tone and strengthening of the upper body, but it gives you balance, and it can take some pressure off of the legs as well. So what can I do maybe next time to help prevent a little bit of that pain that I experienced this last so time? So when you say IT bands, like, do you know for sure, was it assessed as IT bands? You, yeah, it because was. I also suffer from it. So exactly. I felt it on the outer sides of my thighs, both legs, and then even going up and down stairs exactly. for about a day or so after. Exactly. Felt not great. Exactly. But, yeah. Well, you're, you're not in the minority there. I think a lot of people suffer from the same thing, especially, like I said, when, they're, when they've not done a lot of that activity and then go full force. I think one of the most important things is stretching. Mm. A nice stretch and a bit of a muscle activation before going out will help ensure, hopefully, you know, less fatigue during the... Uh, the hike, but less soreness afterwards. So getting those tissues that you're going to be using a lot of just kind of warmed up, even a brisk walk, if you want for one or two kilometers just beforehand is a nice way to get things going. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's a great idea to drive for two hours, jump out of the car and then start climbing, you know? You can do it. It's just a matter of how much of a price you're going to pay when you're done. Yeah, it's true. And that's often what we do, right? We drive to that trailhead and then we're just eager to get there, get yes. the views yes. and we just pop out of the car and go. I feel like... Those activities, and sometimes we call them, quote, unquote, the weekend warriors, those people will ensure physio stays in business for a long time (laughs) (laughs) because we see a lot of overuse injuries and a lot of things that creep up just because, again, we're not not physically ready for that kind of demand. So like I I said, one of the most important things is anticipate what kind of physical output you need and then get some repetitions in before you get there. You don't want your first burst of energy to be used on the actual hike. 
Yeah. That's why you don't want to go couch to 10K, right? Like you want to take your time to get there. And the thing is, a lot of people are so competitive and they got that winning mindset. I always say it's great that you have that mindset, but the body has different, different ideas. So training is super important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, getting ready. Now, would you recommend if you are doing a lot of hikes, even as you're working through this, building up to do more difficult hikes, if you do feel those aches and pains, what are good things? Going to physio, going to massage to kind of relieve that? I would say if, if simple things like stretching and, and, you know, getting your repetitions in before the hike aren't doing it for you and you're still being plagued by pain or issues when you're done and that kind of reoccurs, you know, every time you go for a hike, I do think it's not a bad idea to, to get an assessment. A lot of the times there's underlying reasons why these things are developing. Like you had mentioned IT bands. So anyone who has, you know, tight hips, that can kind of sometimes lead into IT band issues and knee issues. A lot of the times when we assess the ankles, uh, one of the biggest limitations is called dorsiflexion. That's bringing your ankle back towards you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a lot of dorsiflexion range, that's putting a ton of pressure through all the different tissues in your lower extremities. And then we find that that can cause an overuse injury. So a lot of the times it's not necessarily, it's not that we're going to fix an acute problem. It's that we're going to assess, we're going to do a body scan and tell you, you know what, you might be primed for an injury if you don't look at these areas. And then you're kind of better off. Right. Because yeah. then you can evaluate the hike you're going to do based on, wait, this might not be good because I do have these tight hips. Exactly. So going straight up for 9K, not the best idea for me. <laughs> you might pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks as always, Mike. Pleasure my to absolute, have you. My pleasure. All right, that's Mike Salami with MoveNetics Physiotherapy. He joins us every month here on Edmonton AM.